Dan is a one-man band. He'll tell you the band has been together as long as he can remember, but they've been playing music together for 28 years. He lives in Calgary with his wife and two offspring. Please put your hands together for Dan Duguay. All right. You sure? Mm -hmm. All right. I grew up in a very loving family. My self-imposed role was to make my mother and father and sister laugh. I was a natural joker and this gave my parents much joy. They were also lovers of music. They didn't play instruments or sing or do much in the arts, so becoming an artist was not something they ever thought their child would do. I went to university in my hometown of Ottawa, but I was not thinking of getting a nine to five job. I developed a passion for singing and playing guitar so becoming a one-man band was an obvious thing for me to do, not. Drilling bolts into a perfectly good pair of shoes was not something my father could understand. But build a one-man band contraption I did. I was not great at being a one-man band when I started out, but Ottawa had a very vibrant performers, street performer community. Sp Spark Street Mall and the Byward Market were both open to buskers. In fact, it was in this very mall that I saw my first one-man band when I was 12 years old. I was able to practice my art and develop my craft all the while getting paid to do it. As luck would have it, the 90s was a great time to be a busker in Canada. The loony and the toony were both in heavy circulation. For the first time, Canadians were carrying around large amounts of change in their pockets, and I was happy to help relieve them of the heavy load. <laughs> Busking for me was a lucrative, relatively tax-free business venture. I did not stick to Canada. A busker friend had tipped me off that the streets were paved with gold in Japan. And so with my guitar and drum in tow, I set off to the other side of the world with long stops in Australia and Asia. I had no idea how it was going to all work, but what did I have to lose? Turns out they loved the Beatles and I could make a living singing Hey Jude and Let It Be. <laughs> Busking was a great way to see the world. I felt like I could go anywhere and earn enough to live. My only foes were drunks, bitter shop owners, and the police. This picture is from the Fringe Festival in the Edinburgh. I was shut down because of uh, loud noises. I like the clear display of good cop, bad cop in this picture. <laughs> By 95, my wife and I had decided to move to Calgary. One of the reasons was I felt Calgarians seemed more generous with their money than the other places in Canada. <laughs> it's true, and Eau Claire Market was a vibrant part of the city's core. It gave me the ability to busk indoors year-round, rain, sleet, or snow. This was a factor for someone reliant on nice weather to earn a living. Many people who lived here in the 90s remembered me from those times, me and Artie the Jester. How many conversations have I had about those days and that guy? I've also heard, are you Dan the One Man Band from Eau Claire Market? Innumerable times. This picture was on billboard and buses around the city. I had not planned on traveling to Africa, but through winning a Best Busker Award, I was in invited by a charity group to travel to some places where busking would not have been an option. Performing in schools and orphanages in Africa was very war rewarding and life-changing. I have vivid memories of this time, like dancing and singing with a Maasai tribe in Kenya. I also did a trip to Peru where I performed at schools and orphanages. These trips made me more grateful for where I came from and the freedom that it gave me. You win the lottery when you are Canadian. Traveling to some foreign countries reminded me how difficult life can be and that I should not take anything for granted. On that trip to Peru, one of the volunteers had brought a bunch of clown noses. I'd always been a clown at heart, but I'd never worn the costume. I remember really embracing the idea. There was a language barrier, so I used music and mime, miming to make the day brighter. There's something so liberating when you come to terms with who you are. This trip helped me with that. When my wife and I decided to have children, I also made the, the decision to seek more paid gigs and to rely less on busking. I, became, I began performing more at fairs, festivals, corporate and community events. I did my best effort to balance domestic, domestic life with that of an entertainer. Pichekucha, Pichekucha. I, ne I never considered myself a children's entertainer per se, but many people did. I think Bert from Mary Poppins had something to do with that. Once I had children of my own, I decided to accept the role. It seemed natural. I think young people were drawn to my childlike energy. I was the parent at the playground that the kids would always gravitate to. I owe much of my success and happiness to the woman in this picture. Being married to a one-man band has its challenges, as you can imagine. 
She has been very supportive as I have had one foot in the entertainment industry and another foot in domestic home life. It was particularly challenging in the early years as she juggled her own work life with taking care of the children when I was out of town. Playing at fairs is rewarding and fun work. This picture was taken at Vancouver's Pacific National Exhibition. I enjoy performing at these types of events because unlike on the street, everyone is there to have fun. It's also nice to have confirmed money and not have to solicit to the audience. You can focus all your energy on entertaining people. I credit part of my success to my versatility as an entertainer, whether it's entertaining a group of school children or a warehouse full of blue collar workers. I can shift gears and give the audience a show they want. Learning my craft on the street enabled me to develop this skill. As you can imagine, out on the street, you can never be quite sure who's going to be standing in front of you. This is a cast of variety entertainers. We've been doing shows together for the past five years up in Edmonton. We call ourselves the Royal Bohemian Circus. It's an amazing dinner theater show that has gotten rave reviews. The fellow on the bottom right with the sword put the show together. He balances between being a juggler with his other job as a lawyer. <laughs> it's true. Lately, I've been focused on writing songs for young people. As I help raise two children, I see some of the challenges they face in this new era. I've written songs about nutrition, bullying, design thinking, lifestyle, and citizenship. I've created a show that is fun and educational. As you can see, I really get into my subject matter. <laughs> Being from Canada allowed me the freedom to invent myself as Dan the One Man Band. Busking gave me the ability to learn my craft while I made a living doing it. I did not get anyone's permission. I developed as a unique entertainer who moved from the street into more conventional venues. As we become a cashless society, I wonder how we will pay the future buskers. Usually everyone an answers with, oh, there will probably be an, a, an app developed for buskers where you can pay with a debit or something like that. But I'm not so sure. The spontaneity is lost. I'm so glad I decided to not listen to my father when I ruined those perfectly good pair of shoes. I may, I may be the last of an era of buskers, but I hope, certainly hope not.